Good morning, President Mather and members of the board. Let me take just a moment to talk about this morning's events as well. Uh, first off, let me thank the CalPERS Chorus for sharing their talent with us. It's just a wonderful way of uh, celebrating the holiday season. Next, let me join in thanking the board members who are completing their final meeting today. Uh, I'd like to start by expressing my deep appreciation to Priya for her 16 years of service to this organization and to our members. During her tenure, Priya has helped CalPERS lead the charge on several fronts, from healthcare to sustainable investing, as well as making the case of why diversity and inclusion matter. Her leadership has helped leverage our strength as the largest purchaser of healthcare insurance in California and initiated innovative programs to enhance member benefits. She's been a passionate advocate for the material impact that environmental, social, and governance factors have on our investments. And she has the distinction of being the first woman board president in CalPERS's history. We will miss you, Priya, and have great confidence that you will continue to work to serve the citizens of California. After all, public service is in your heart. I would also like to thank the uh, Treasurer John Chung for his service to the state of California. John has spent the last 12 years as an ex officio member of the board, first as the state controller, and for the last few years as state treasurer. We've worked together on items such as responsible contracting and corporate engagement. Thank you to John for his work and for the passion he brought to this board and to his public service. While we're on the subject of serving others, I'd like to give you an update on the team's effort to help the victims of the campfire in the Paradise area. In the time that they have been deployed to the Disaster Recovery Center in Chico, they've been able to serve our members, providing local support to those in need. They've assisted over 900 members with changes of address, direct deposit, and health benefit information. And just a couple of stories. For one member who had no time to retrieve the retirement check on her kitchen table, they were able to replace it and FedEx it to her hotel room. For another member, completely overwhelmed with the circumstances, they were able to expedite his retirement application to continue a source of income that was very important. And for many non-members, non-CalPERS members who stopped by the CalPERS table because they were told to visit every single table at the Disaster Recovery Center, they were able to connect them with agencies and resources. Those team members are here with us today, and I'd like to recognize them by name. Please stand when I call your name and remain standing. Diane Carpenter. <laughs> Janine Dickey. <laughs> Bill Greenhalge. and Charlene Washington. And these uh, team members, these employees, worked long days, some days, 12, 14 hour days in, in that center. Marcy, I think there's one more uh, oh. member of the team, sorry. It's not. <coughs> What's one? Shimona, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> could you also please stand? So in addition to serving our members on the front lines, our teams back home and in our regional locations have been working together to expedite support and resolve issues, one by one for both employers and members. Of the 48 employers in the area surrounding Paradise and Chico, we've been contacted by about a half a dozen so far with a, uh, excuse me, with a variety of concerns and are tracking the data for what they need. I'd like to thank all of our employers or employees in customer service and support, benefit services, health account management, employer account management, information technology, and financial services for the very important work they do and their dedication to those we serve. On behalf of the board, thank you all very much for your service above and beyond. It's really extraordinary and reflects so well on CalPERS as an organization. Yes. And I'd also like... Okay. I'd also like to thank Tim Behrens for providing comment at the table on, on Monday, as expressing his appreciation as well, excuse me, on Tuesday. 
so health regents, uh, this is the time of year when we're uh, reflecting on our accomplishments and focus on the priorities ahead. Uh, one of these priorities is the work we've been doing around healthcare regions, and you'll be voting on that as a full board this morning. This is an important decision that will help us better align the cost of care in our healthcare program, which now covers nearly 1.5 million beneficiaries and dependents. As we begin the new year, our focus continues to be on maintaining the quality of care while also containing cost. The 2020 negotiations will start in just a few months. Let me turn now to our comprehensive annual financial report, or CAFR, for fiscal year 2017 and 18. It was just released uh, this last week. The core of the report is the financial statements that you all approved last month. They provide a detailed summary of financial results, such as our funded status, our investment returns, and our pension benefit payments. The CAFR is one of the most useful tool tools we produce each year to share plan data with our stakeholders and the public. While we're on the subject of data, it's always worth mentioning that employers can now access their valuation reports online for more specific information about their individual plans, funded status, and their contribution rates. And the actuarial team is always uh, available and willing to assist them as they read through those reports. Turning now to some outreach and engagement, uh, earlier this year in June, CalPERS joined with a global group of peer funds to work on initiatives around the G7, known as the Investors Leadership Forum, excuse me, network. And there's a screenshot uh, on the screen for, for you to look at. Um, this is an organization uh, supported by the Canadian government as well and includes 12 global investors, such as CDBQ out of Quebec, and, on, and the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan, representing about $6 trillion in assets, working together by committing resources and expertise to practically advance three key ob objectives of the G7. And those initiatives include, one, enhancing expertise in infrastructure financing and development in emerging economies, two, supporting and tracking diversity opportunities for underrepresented groups in finance and investment worldwide, and three, speeding up the implementation of uniform climate-related disclosures under the Task Force for Climate-Related Financial Disclosures Framework. We're pleased with the opportunity to partner with the funds involved in these important initiatives. Uh, the Sustainable Investments Program will give you an update on the Investors Leadership Network in March as they do their annual program review. As I mentioned last month, I made my first visit to the California State Boards Association's annual education conference, and I was on a panel and a very valuable opportunity to talk with the school board members about the key pension plan issues that uh, their districts face. My fellow panelists did a great job of reinforcing the value of defined benefit pension plans and highlighting the challenges of public school funding statewide. I spoke with several attendees after the session who had some very good questions and I look forward to doing additional follow-up with them in the future. Uh, last week I also participated on another panel for the California League of Cities at a conference of their municipal finance officers. Um, this panel gave attendees more broad exposure to public pension issues from you know, very diverse perspectives including from a mayor, uh, a city manager, and the League's legislative advocate. This is my third event with the League this year, and I'm appreciative of the ongoing dialogue with various groups of their members. I have several upcoming engagements for January, starting with the California Society of Municipal Finance Officers earlier, early in the month. This will be my third visit to, to that group. And also, I want to remind you that there would be no board meeting here at CalPERS headquarters next month. We will be meeting in Roanoke Park for our beginning of the year education and strategy workshops. Uh, before the year closes out, I want to invite you to join our CalPERS team for the winter gathering this afternoon from 1.30 to 2.30 here in the Lincoln Plaza North Atrium. This is our annual holiday event to extend well wishes to our employees and to thank them for all of their hard work in the prior year. The executive team, and I know the board, will be serving refreshments there. One last item before I give you the investment uh, performance update, and this is around a new program that we created here at CalPERS called the Emerging Leader Program. It received the 2018 Best Practices and Talent Development Award for the public sector from the Sacramento chapter of the Association for Talent Development earlier this month on December 5th. The Emerging Leader Program was a pilot that we launched here at CalPERS last year to prepare high-performing analysts to successfully compete for roles in leadership. 
Of the participants who participated in the pilot, 32% have since received promotions. The award was judged by an independent panel from association chapters from around the United States. They acknowledged that the Emerging Leader Program, for its, that it was practical, it was innovative, and that it showed measurable results while demonstrating its tran transferability of best practices to other organizations. I'd like to also congratulate Tina Campbell and the Human Resources team for all of their efforts to develop this program. They're also here in the auditorium. Please stand so we can recognize you as well. I'd also like to thank all of the applicants. There are only so many slots for the Emerging Leader Program. We received more applications than we could actually fill, um, or that we could actually um, uh, host. And so the mentors who are involved in this program are extremely important. So we've seen the success. We plan on continuing to offer this program, so we want our team to continue to apply. So I'll close now with the investment performance year to date as of October 31st. The preliminary one-year rolling return is 1.3, the three-year return is 6.5, the five-year re return is 6, and the 10-year return is 7.9. And then finally, I'd like to wish everyone a happy holiday season. Our CalPERS headquarters and regional offices will be closed on Christmas Day and New Year's Day. And that does conclude my remarks, and I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>